Coach, talk about the balance that we've seen in these playoffs. It's not just Marble. We've seen McCabe hit a couple of big three-pointers. Woodbury is, seems to be playing his best uh, all, so far this season. I mean, how big has that been for these playoff runs, and how big is it going to be at Madison Square Garden? Well, it's going to be really big for us there, but I think it's it's been the case all year long. You never know which three or four guys are going to be our leading scorers. I mean, typically you're looking at Marble and, and Aaron White. <coughs> But uh, you know, Aaron White has one field goal. Wasabi doesn't have any. And we beat Virginia on the road. Uh, that's the kind of team we have. McCabe's been playing extremely well. Clemens can score. He was spectacular in the second half. Mike was great in the first half. And Marble's been on fire. That's terrific for us. But you know, we know Woodbury's going to have games where he can be a double-double guy. And uh, you know, Ola Shaney, not as much in that game, but he's been fabulous down the stretch. So. All those guys are going to keep playing, and I think in a lot of ways it makes us harder to prepare for. The assist uh, field goal ratio on your team is very, very good. Uh, is that something you thought maybe was possible, or have they over exceeded your expectations in that regard? Well, I, I thought it was possible because we have an unselfish team. We have you know, forwards who can pass the ball. A lot of times you look at those numbers, and it's a function of can your big guys pass? And Woodbury is a good passer. The guys are unselfish. It's not just your point guards, but we do essentially have three point guards. And they all have really good assist turnover numbers. And there were times this year when we had all three of them on the floor in the starting lineup, and sometimes just by chance. So you know, I think if you look at it collectively, you know, we don't, we're not making the kinds of mistakes we used to make. You look at assist turnover numbers across the board, most of our guys are in the positive. And most of uh, had this NIT experience before. Uh, What's your thoughts about that? Well, it's, it's a tremendous experience uh, in so many ways. Obviously, purely from a basketball standpoint, to be able to go to that venue and continue to practice and play for a championship, it's, it's wonderful. You'll have an opportunity to do some things in New York as a team. Uh, it's, it's a great way for a guy like Eric May to finish his career. There'll be a lot of families there. They'll enjoy that type of experience. We'll have alumni there who have maybe had an opportunity to see us. I mean, there, there are so many positives, but, you know, from my perspective, you know, continue to play in the kind of atmosphere that we played in the other night and continue to challenge our players to, to handle that and succeed in that type of environment, I think is critical. And this is, this is the next step. Now we're going to Madison Square Garden, neutral site, playing a, a terrific team. In Maryland, two other great teams are there, and uh, you know I think to be still playing at this time of year is really very special. Is and a deep run for you guys in this ultimately better for the program than maybe a one and done in the tournament would have been the NCAA? You know I look at it like this. Uh, you know everybody wants to jump to that. You know I'm going to argue that there's very little difference between the teams that you're playing. There's just there just is. So if you make a long run in this tournament, we could easily have made a long run in that tournament. It's really a question of who you match up against. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get a, a first round match and you're like, you know, that's the worst team we could have, or the best team. You know, and I've, I've been there. But, uh, you know, I, I look at Virginia, they, sh you know, they should have been in. They're better than teams that, that were let in. There's no question in my mind. Same thing for Maryland, same thing for us. But it didn't happen. And the teams that got in had great resumes too. So we go into into this tournament. You look at that field. So I I, I don't I, I don't look at it that way. To me, I, I think we had a team capable of making a run no matter which tournament we went to. The fact that we're getting an opportunity to play more with a young team, I think, is a very good thing. In what ways has your program been helped the development of the program long term by continuing to play now? What benefits do you see that's going on in practice right now, in games right now that could be beneficial? Well, the, the funny thing about that is, I mean, it's great to continue to practice. But you know our practices are we're, we're, we're backing way off. You know we're we'll get up and down a little bit and we'll, we'll lock into the other team. You know it's not like the practices this time of year are that beneficial. Other than it's another opportunity to figure out can we put a game plan in? Can they carry the game plan out to beat the next quality opponent on our schedule? All of those challenges will help us as we move forward. So additional opportunities for that additional opportunities for our young guys to play in games. You know, to see how Adam Woodbury played the other night, that was huge for him. 
now he gets an opportunity to go against Alex Len. Uh, you know, he's a lottery pick. So, you know, from that standpoint, it's a great challenge for him. He's gone against other lottery picks this year. So we'll see how it goes for him. He'll, he'll be ready for the challenge. And as you look down the road, more, the more opportunities like this you have, the better off you're going to be. What's kind of your garden experiences, you know, your, uh, from a personal standpoint? Well, they, you know, they've been fairly, you know, extensive. I played there, coached there as an assistant coach. Coached, uh, uh, I think I don't know that I've coached there. I think I coached there as a head coach. Uh, but you know, we've been in the finals. We lost in, you know, overtime in the championship with the NIT. The Utah in the semis, we lost actually to Virginia in, in overtime. Uh, it's it's one of those places, you know, when you walk into the building, you, you, know, you feel, you know, this is sort of the mecca of, of, of college basketball in so many ways. And, and I'm thrilled that our guys are going to have, have that kind of experience. You know, once the game starts, like anything else, you know, the building itself, it, it, no different. And, and you got to focus on, on the opponent. And, uh, so I'm just thankful for the opportunity. What is the first time line? you ever saw a game in the garden? Uh, I never went to a game in the garden until I played there. Uh, you know, growing up in Philadelphia, we went to games in the Palestra. We didn't, we didn't necessarily go to games in the garden. We watched them. I you know, watched those great Nick teams, like a lot of people in this room. They were phenomenal. You know, I remember the Willis Reed game and, and things of that nature. I remember that vividly. Uh, but uh, I remember it was it was exciting for me to, to play there for the first time. We played in the in the Christmas tournament there. What about for a festival? Sorry. What about for a guy like Melson to, to play back in New York? Well, he's he was he might have been the happiest guy in the locker room. He's going home and he's going to have all kinds of people at the game. His family. You know, just to see that smile on his face was, was, was just a, a phenomenal feeling for me that he gets to go home. He took a bit of a chance coming from New York here with you. Yeah. Does this become a nice reward for him then? No question about it. You know, but he's, you know, the thing about Melson, you know, you, you look at him and say, well, yeah, it was a bit of a, a leap of faith in terms of uh, I'm going to go out there with Coach. It, this is a bright person here. He knows what the Big Ten is. He, he knows who's in the league. And, you know, he wanted to make a decision that he would, you know, and no disrespect to the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, but let's play Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, you know, rather than, you know, Loyola, Canisius, St. Peter's. But, I mean, he, he made that decision. That's what he wanted. He wanted to challenge himself. He knew it was going to be harder. He was an all-league player there, you know, four straight years, a potential player of the year candidate there. I mean, when we signed him, that's what we thought. We thought we had a, you know, a thousand point score, a thousand rebound guy, and a four time first team all conference guy, and potential player of the year. That's what we thought we had. Anything short of that, I wouldn't have brought him here because it wouldn't have been fair to him. You know, just like if I needed a body, I, 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 didn't, I, I, I didn't need bodies, I needed players. And he's a player, and he's not afraid, and I think he'll thrive in that environment.